He no. did? No. No. Jesus didn't break any laws. Why did Jesus die on the cross? People thought he did. Why did Jesus die on the cross? Okay, 
Now wait a minute, you had your hand up to say, no, it's not a normal thing. All right, so why is it not a normal thing? You think it's a normal thing? Sometimes they would, they would do that, but usually they didn't. Yeah. The bodies didn't have anything on them. No, unless it feels like an Egyptian. Okay. Yeah, the Egyptians would. Yeah, the Egyptians would bury you with all your stuff. Okay. <laughs> the Hebrews didn't do that. The Jewish people didn't do that. So if there's really nothing in a tomb to steal, right? Why would you want a body? I don't know. Maybe they're lonely. Okay. Thank you, Katie. That was that was really disturbing. Thank you. Thank you. I'll remember that about you. Okay. They there usually was no reason to roll a stone in front of the tomb. People stayed out of the caves. Besides, when bodies start to decompose, they stink. More than a teenager's room. They stink. That was really bad. It stinks really bad. It smells bad. Yeah, even worse, though. All right. But although she didn't know it, Kaya was on to something. You see, no, Kaylee was not on to something. Kaylee is on something. But Kaya was on to something. You see, when Jesus was alive, he told them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Now, the people that didn't understand, they thought he was talking about the building, the temple, which was like a church. Only it was big and it was beautiful and it was, it was made with all sorts of precious stones. And the people that didn't understand Jesus thought he was saying, if you destroy this building, I'm gonna build it back in three days. And they said, come on, Jesus, this building took 46 years to build it. You're going to build it back in three days, but they didn't understand. There were some people, though, that understood what he was talking about. You see, Jesus said that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Where does that belong? Where does that belong? We are the temple. When Jesus was talking about the temple, he was talking about his own body. Destroy my body, and in three days, I'm going to raise it up. The disciples understood that. I'm sure. The disciples understood that, and they were telling people, no, what he's saying is that he's going to raise again in three days. That is what resurrection is. Okay, we're sitting here writing out these big old words. And the word resurrection means that you were once dead, but then you come back to life. That's resurrection. You were once dead, but then you come back to life. And so Jesus was saying, in three days, I'm going to come back. Now there's that old thing that, who knows what this means? Who knows what that means? Sometimes, sometimes you see it. I have a yo-yo. No, it's not a yo-yo. It means okay. Uh, I know you guys are probably not into social media and all that, but if you're a teenager, you understand that that means you only live once. Okay. You only live once. And Jesus said, not, not, 
Jesus said, if you destroy this body, I'm going to raise it up again. And so, the priests understood that. And they said, wait a minute. What happens if his disciples come in and steal his body and then tell everybody that he rose again? People are going to believe. They're going to believe him. We don't want that to happen. You see, they were jealous of him. You know, Jesus didn't break any laws. They were jealous of him. He was, he was good. He did good things to people. And it didn't matter whether you were rich or poor. You see, the religious leaders would do good things for you if you could pay them back. If, you know, you, the old saying, you wash my hand and I'll wash yours. You do something good to me and I'll do something good to you. And so they would only do good things for rich people because rich people could do something good for them and usually pay them money. But Jesus didn't do that. Jesus did good things for poor people. And he knew they couldn't pay him back, and that was the whole idea. And Jesus says, well, we do good things. Don't do, don't do good things for the rich people that you know can pay you back. You do good things for the poor people that can't pay you back, and the Father in heaven will pay you back instead. I like that. I like that. So, Jesus said, I will rise again. And the priest said, man, we don't want that to happen because then everybody would follow Jesus. So they said to the, the Roman who was in charge, we want you to put this big stone in front of the tomb. And we want you to post a guard in front of the tomb because we don't want his disciples to come in and steal his body and tell everybody that he rose again. And so they did. But a funny thing happened. Three days later, Jesus said that he was going to rise again after three days, right? Three days later, after he was put in the tomb, all of a sudden, early in the morning, there was a big earthquake. And the stone rolled away from the tomb. And then an angel appeared and it scared the uh, soldiers and they ran away. Jesus came out of the tomb. Jesus came out of the tomb. Now, who knew about it? Nobody. But you see, the reason why uh, nobody came to visit Jesus is because there, there were what they called Sabbath days. You remember when I explained Sabbath days? Where they weren't allowed to do anything on a Sabbath day. You were just able, on a Sabbath day, the only thing you could do was to just sit in your house and do nothing. You go to, you go to the synagogue, which was similar to the church, and then you do nothing all day. You're not allowed to do any work. You're not allowed to do anything on the Sabbath day. You could not travel. That's right. You couldn't travel anywhere. So, now the people that the people that were around Jesus, and Jesus was Jewish, and the, Jesus obeyed the Sabbath except for one thing. Jesus said, "It's it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath." You know, the, Jesus went and healed a guy on the Sabbath once, and they got mad at him because you did something on the Sabbath. You worked on the Sabbath. He said, you hypocrites! You know what a hypocrite is? Yes. Yeah, you know what a hypocrite is?
Okay, listen, 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 guys. Literally, a hypocrite is an actor. It's a person who pretends to be something that they are not. That's what a hypocrite is. And these people were hypocrites. They pretended like they were righteous. They pretended like they were that they were men of God. And they weren't. They were liars. And they were thieves. And they did mean things to people. But Jesus was not. Jesus was not. So they were all concerned. So now, where was I? Why? Why? Nobody came to his tomb because the, there were two Sabbath days in a row. And so nobody was supposed to go out and do anything. And so on the first day of the week, a woman named Mary came and she... Not Mary Magdalene. It wasn't Mary the... Uh, it wasn't Mary the... Uh, Okay. Okay. Yes. There you go. All right. Let's 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 catch up to Nathaniel here. Let's okay. Let's catch up to Nathaniel here. Nathaniel's getting way ahead of us here. So this woman named Mary. Now there were several women named Mary. So. But this was just one of the women named Mary. She came early in the morning because she was going to put spices on Jesus' body so that he wouldn't decompose and start stinking so soon. So that was what she was there for. But when she got there, the stone was rolled away. Now she thought that somebody was going to have to roll the stone away for her. She was probably going to ask the soldiers for help and wasn't sure if they would help her or not. But... She thought that uh, you know, the, the stone was going to be there and she would need help. But she came anyway, and when she got there, there was no stone. The stone was rolled away. There was no soldiers. They were gone. And when she looked inside, there was no body. Jesus' body was not there. She, yeah, she, thought, she thought somebody took the body. And she, she got upset. And she was sitting at the mouth of the tomb and she was just crying. And a man walked up to her. And he said, Woman, why are you crying? And she didn't recognize him. She thought he was the gardener. And she said, Sir, if you carry him away, please tell me where he's at and we will take him. And then all of a sudden Jesus said, Mary, then she recognized him. Then she recognized him. No, she didn't say how do you know. She said, Rabboni, which means teacher. She understood who he was. That's when she understood. She said, Rabboni, teacher. He said, don't, don't touch me. I haven't gone to the Father yet. But go and tell. Tell my disciples that I have risen and that I will meet them. And so she went back she went back as fast as she could, back to where all the other disciples were staying. And she knocked at the door. Wake up. She knocked at the door. She said, they've taken his body. His, uh, uh, not taken his body, but they said, uh, Jesus, I saw Jesus. I saw Jesus. He's alive. He's alive. And Peter and John... Peter and John took off running. Now, Peter, Peter was an older guy. Peter was the guy that had all the answers. Yeah, he, he kind of, you kind of say he was a smart out. Peter was the guy that was always talking. He was running. But you see, John was younger. John was younger. He was a younger man. And so John could run faster. And John ran faster than Peter and got to the tomb first. But when he got there, he stopped and he's just looking in. Now I can see this now. I can see this now. Uh, no, not Nathaniel. Um, Matthias, thank you. I'm getting old. Matthias, come here. I want you to pretend to be John. 
You're just standing here like this. You're looking into the tomb. So he's, he's just standing there looking into the tomb. And here comes old fat Peter. Peter doesn't wait. Peter, I'm sure he must have shoved John aside. And he just went down into the tomb. And then John went in too. Good acting, good acting. But you see, what did they see there? Nothing. They just saw empty cloths. They said the, the, the cloth that covered his body was all folded up. And the cloth that was on his face was all folded up and by itself. Even after he died, Jesus made his bed. Seriously. Even after he died, Jesus made his bed. No lie. I am not lying. So, if you guys get sick and tired of your mom or your dad saying, make your bed, make your bed, make your bed, make your bed, Jesus made his bed, okay? Jesus made his bed, and I'm going to just leave it right there. I'm just going to leave it right there. There's a picture right there, right there. Jesus made his bed. He's good. He's good. He even makes his bed. You know what? Can you imagine if you were one of Jesus' younger brothers? He had four brothers. He had sisters. Yeah, he had brothers and sisters. They were actually half-brothers and half-sisters because they had the same mom because Mary had other children. But he didn't have the same dad. He actually had... Well, okay, technic technically they were half-brothers, okay? They were half-brothers. They had the same mom but not the same dad. Because who was Jesus' dad? God. God. Who was the other brothers and sisters' dad? Joseph. Yes, Jesus was not the son of Joseph. Jesus was the son of God. Okay, you have cousins. You have, you have brothers. You have four brothers. They have friends. You have four brothers. Oh, yeah, you have friends. You have lots of friends. How, how would you like to be one of Jesus' brothers, okay? Your older brother is always perfect. And Dominic's going, yeah, I know how that I know how that feels. The older brother always does everything right. Never does anything wrong. And Kaya's over there going, I know how that feels. You can't, you can't measure up, can you? No. You just can't measure up. All right. I'm joking here, but let me get back to the lesson. The truth is that Jesus did exactly what he said he was going to do. He said he was going to rise again after three days, and he did. He said he was going to rise again after three days, and he did. Stone in front of the tomb? No problem. We'll just make an earthquake. Soldiers guarding the door? No problem. We'll just send an angel and scare him away. All covered in cloths? No problem. I just pull them off and make my bed. <laughs> yeah. 
You got a problem that you think God can't help you with? No problem. Not for God. You got something that you need? No problem. Not for God. Death? No problem. Not for God. No problem. Not for God. Now, does that mean that everybody who dies is going to rise again? No. Yes and no. Yes. Yes and no. First of all, in the body, no. I'm looking around and I'm seeing a lot of people who have lost loved ones. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I'm, you know, I'm looking around. I've lost a lot of loved ones. And they, they didn't come back. But guess what? There's going to be a resurrection. There's going to be a resurrection. Not here on earth, but in heaven. Not here on earth, but in heaven. And those who die in Christ rise again. That's the big deal. When Jesus rose again, He did that so that we could also rise again. Death will not be permanent. We will rise again in heaven. I want everybody to bow your heads, close your eyes. Father, I thank you. Because you rose again. And because you rose again, you conquered sin. Death couldn't even have victory over your body. You rose again. Because you rose again, we will also rise again. And our loved ones will also rise again. Father, those that are here, I pray that they would first of all be comforted with that knowledge. But second of all, that we would strive to live for you all the days of our lives. That we would want to live for you and for you alone. That we would do all the right things, Lord. It's not in our power to do the right things, but you give us the power. Because you promised us that if we are in you, we will rise again. And we will live again in heaven. Lord, I pray a blessing on each, on each child here, on each teenager here, on each adult here. I pray a blessing, Lord God. I ask you that you would encourage us, that you would keep us, and that, Lord, when we are confronted with a choice to do right or wrong, that we would always choose to do right. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, as Miss Faith is getting ready here.